Um, so I'd like to start out with a question. Um, assuming everybody here works in the digital domain, how many of you folks have at one time or another lost session data or audio files or let's show of hands, let's see. So the folks, of, the, the few of you who haven't raised your hands are either really new to this business <laughs> or you've been extremely lucky so far. And I guess we can go into that later. But, or, or sorry, or you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> or you're lying like that. Or they're just plain that? No. lying. Um, I had an interesting situation. I, I'd like to ask everybody to, on the panel here to, to share just a brief story if they can. But um, I had an interesting situation uh, about a year and a half ago where I was uh, asked to do a surround mix for a, a pretty big single for an independent rock band. And, uh, and we went looking for the data. And it, uh, some of it lived with the producer. Some of it lived with a second producer who did a remix. Some of it lived with the lead singer. And when I got all of these hard drives together and put them together on my system, I still didn't have enough to, to put the drum kit back together. So I ended up having to build a surround mix based on the stereo mix and then augmenting stuff with it, which was just lame. Um, but this is what has to happen sometimes when you can't find all the data. Um, there's another famous uh, story about Ron Fair, who's a, 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 a illustrious producer, um, who was talking about having to remix the Moulin Rouge film soundtrack. And uh, this was like two years after the movie had been released. They were going to do a remix, and uh, they went looking for the master tapes, and there was nothing. Zero. They couldn't even find them. Um, so, I, you know, let's continue to scare these guys a little bit. Um, George, do you have any interesting tales you'd like to tell? Um, my come to Jesus moment was uh, with SCSI hard drives and forgetting to unmount them and plugging another Dixie Chicks SCSI hard drive in and overwriting the super block. You named names. I did name names. I was supposed not to name names. And, um, and, it, and having to recreate the work. Having, uh, we saw the audio files, but didn't have any of the session files for a week's worth of work and having to remember what I did for a week. And uh, maybe you don't have to name names. <laughs> well, um, I've, uh, I've corrupted files and lost files and had to rebuild them before. Uh, I think everyone's done that. But um, uh, one thing that really sticks in my mind is a, um, uh, a classical recording project I did, uh, and it was done uh, on DA-88. So this was back in the early 90s. We were very uh, careful to back up after every session when we did the overdubs. Yes, we overdubbed on classical music. Um, uh, we uh, made sure we made uh, copies uh, of the tapes. So every time the tape was backed up, we had two copies of everything uh, geographically separated. And uh, when it came later for the record label to want to mix it in surround, because that was always the plan, uh, to mix this in surround, neither copy of the tape could be found. So. Uh, I don't know, that's probably a good mid-figure, six-figure loss for the record company. And uh, there was no way to point blame. Everyone blamed everyone else, I guess. I think we've got this one here. Yeah, this is your table's mic. Uh, yeah, being that I to tend to specialize at the, the front end of converting things from either analog tape to digital or digital tape to digital, most of the disasters I encounter are with strictly just keeping a track of your materials. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of mixed sessions and, and really intricate things that, uh, but it's disastrous, obviously, because you just can't replace all the tracks that were there. So, uh, in the analog world, you did, or in the, the hard physical world, you just got to keep close uh, track of all those tapes and things. That's numerous bands have lost, sending me all sorts of stuff, sending me another dozen reels to see if it's on there because they just don't know where it is so it can get expensive so take care of it now um on the mastery side we were blessed but on the, the tracking side of tree lady we had a i call it jbot just a bunch of drives where uh we had about eight different drives holding all the pro tool sessions for bands and uh the, the bands we work with they have day jobs and they save up money and they don't have a lot of money so they come and they do three songs at a clip then come back three months later and we lost, uh, at the time, we, we lost all of our Lassie drives. They all had a, something with the, the chipset just went nuts. Uh, and um, we lost about 48 different band sessions. And uh, 
to the, these bands, it wasn't a lot of money. It might have been a fifteen hundred dollars per band, but that's that's a million dollars when you know you work, you know you're making eighteen thousand dollars a year, and you and your bandmates are splitting your album, and so. Uh, it, it, it was catastrophic to them, and, and for the studio, we just we offered to re-record those bands at our our loss, which isn't easy when you're a small. You all know the economics of this industry, um, but uh, that was that was bad for those people. It was the end of the world because you know that was hard for them to come back. So uh, even if it's not a national or Grammy-winning potential thing, losing data still matters to those whose data it was. So. Three quick ones. Um, Seven-figure deal lost over a Guitar Hero. Uh, can't find the drives. Um, Six hundred grand into a recording, and a member of the crew tripped on the way out of the studio and dropped the drive. And uh, third one, raw scuzzy drive found behind the refrigerator. Grammy-winning artist. <laughs> so I, I want to hear the rest of that story at the bar tonight. <laughs> Good grief. But that's a happy ending. That's a happy ending. You found it, and it probably spun up. Um, but before we launch into a, a, any kind of discussion about technology or philosophies, I wanted to do a quick survey among the folks in the room and, uh, and ask you folks a couple of questions. Um, how many of you back up your stuff on any kind of regular basis. OK, how many of you back up the hard drive? Show of hands. Back up to hard drive? Yes, as your final destination. So half the room-ish. Um, how many of you uh, back up to optical, CDR, DVDR, et cetera? Do you do this as an adjunct to backing up the hard drive, or do you do this as your final destination? OK. Um, how many back up to digital tape of some kind? DLT, AIS, LTO? Oh, OK. Wow. Good crowd. Um, how many back up to some other format? What do you back up to? Secondary online, like Amazon S3. Cloud. I'm, exper I'm experimenting with that right now. It's not a regular thing. So. Coolers don't yeah. have. Because yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a freelancer, so I don't, I don't have an off-site yeah. What's, just out of curiosity, what's their policy if you forget to pay your bill for 30 days? Uh, Does it go? It, it's linked to your one-click account on Amazon, so they have your card. And, and of course, that'll never expire. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many don't back up their stuff at all right now? Come on, be honest. How many? OK, everybody backs up to something. Good. Excellent. Great. Um, I did uh, a survey of. Uh, in, I'm from Seattle, so I did a, a survey in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, by format, well, I had about 28 responses of people from uh, Vancouver, BC, down to about Eugene, Oregon. And uh, uh, of the 28 responses, and there uh, 10 backed up to optical CD, DVD. And then there was a great deal of discussion about formats, you know, DVD minus R, DVD plus R versus CDR. Um, <clears throat> about uh, nine people backed up to hard disk. Uh, three people backed up to multiple brands of DVDs at multiple burn speeds, which I thought was an interesting bit of voodoo. <laughs> uh, two people back up to multiple hard drives. Uh, one studio backs up to a RAID. Uh, one used data tape. One used flash drives. Scary. Um, and one person didn't back up to anything because they couldn't afford to, quote unquote to which I responded, you can't afford not to. Um, but some other interesting data came out. Um, these are some of the abandoned formats. Everybody has gone through a series of formats before they landed on the thing that they're using currently. Um, three people had abandoned DLT, two had abandoned AIT, two abandoned DAT, uh, data DATs. Um, one person gave up on CDRs, and another one gave up on DVD. Um, how many of you folks have tried multiple formats before ending up with what you're currently using? Yeah, OK. Good to know. Um, and then the last question I asked was, what do you charge for this? And this was sort of the interesting part. Um, two of the studios charged a, a flat rate, somewhere under 50 bucks per session or per client. 
Uh, two studios were flat rate between 50 and 100 bucks. Uh, three studios charge per unit, typically per gigabyte or, or per storage unit, multiple DVDs, multiple tape, whatever. Um, and five studios didn't charge anything. They worked it into the fees that they charge for their studio time, um, which I thought was an interesting part of the business model. Um, so everybody's thinking about this. But I'm not quite sure that everybody's thinking about it to the degree that um, they, they understand the difference between some of the basic terminology and some of the basic techniques. So today, we're going to tear this apart into three different levels. We're going to discuss backup versus archival delivery formats, and then finally talk about migration. 